Experiment three is preparation of solutions and a hand sanitizer. So objectives of this experiment are to learn how to make solutions, determine the molarity of the solution, how to prepare an antibacterial solution, and how to make a hand sanitizer as an application of chemistry during this time of pandemic. So we're now by the balance and by now you know how to weigh this is, uh, the balance is zeroed, so it's zero right now. So the uh, salt is sodium chloride and ACL, this is also referred to as the table salt. And then, so the process to weigh is I have the weighing boat, this is the weighing boat, and I'm gonna put it inside the balance, okay, like that. And then I'm going to weigh um, the salt, but I will zero this again by pressing zero. So um, the weight of the boat is now zeroed and I'm going to put 5.844 grams of the NaCl by using a spatula like this. So I now have a, um, a spatula or a scupula and then I will put 5.844 grams of the salt. Okay, and I'm looking at the weight. Okay, so I'm I need more, 5.844 grams. Okay, a little bit more. So I close it and then we're gonna let it, so leave it for a few seconds or a few minutes until it doesn't fluctuate. So right now I have 5.845. So write this down please, 5.845 grams is the weight of the NaCl. So this is now the salt that I, that I weighed, 5.845 grams, and then I'm gonna put it now in the beaker. So we're preparing a solution, and I labeled that as part A and ACL, and this is now the water. So water is, uh, I measured with a graduated cylinder, 100 mil, so exactly 100 mil, 100.0 ml, and then I'm just going to pour it into the beaker. And then I'm going to stir it using a steering rod, it's glass steer rod and then to dissolve. So it will dissolve fast. So a solution is when you put the solute and then the solvent, so in this case, the solute is your NaCl, that's the salt. And then the water is the solvent, so bigger quantity is the solvent. The solute is a solid, your water is a liquid. So there's going to be an interaction between the salt and the water, that's why it dissolves. So remember that water is polar, and then your NaCl is ionic, it's an ionic compound. There's going to be interaction between the two so that it will, so if there's interaction, then that solute will dissolve. So in this case, NaCl. So the same thing actually at home, NaCl is your table salt. You put salt you know, in your food or when you're cooking something, it will dissolve in the, um, in the water. So now, a solution is that you don't see any separation of the layer. You don't see particles. So you don't see particles that's undissolved. Okay. So, and, so the solute is completely dissolved in water. So your NaCl dissolves complete in water. So it's clear, transparent, okay? All right, so that is part A. That's your solution in part A, so NaCl. So now what you're gonna do is 
you are going to determine the concentration and then uh, put the information or write down the information in the in the report form so now uh, weight of NaCl used volume of water added volume of water in liters so you are going to convert the ml to liters again taking into consideration the significant figure and then write down the formula weight of NaCl grams per mole and then moles of NaCl and then you determine the molarity to the correct unit and significant figure, so show calculation at the bottom. So that's going to be the report form. You're basically just filling in the blanks, but show the calculation, please. So that's part A. Part B, we are now weighing the same NACL, but this time I'm only weighing 0 0.900 grams, exactly 0 0.900 grams for part B. And you can see that I, I did the same thing and then the weighing boat inside has 0 0.900 grams of NaCl, so the same salt. Okay, so I'm going to dissolve this again in 100 ml of water. So this is now the salt that I weighed for part B, 0 0.90 grams of NaCl. And again, I'm going to put it here in the beaker. And then I measured, again, 100 ml. Of water so again when you're reading this when you read this it's going to be again lower meniscus here so 100.0 ml of water so again I'm gonna pour and then dissolve the salt in 100 ml of the water so the same thing so remember for part A, uh, I weighed 5.845 grams, and then this one I only weighed 0 0.900 grams of NaCl. And then it should dissolve too, right? So this one has more weight, this one has less weight, okay? And that means that this, is, this part A solution is more concentrated than the part B solution. So once it's dissolved, we're going to compare. So it should dissolve faster. The same thing, solution, um, when you make a solution, it should be transparent, clear. You don't see any separation of the solute and then the solvent. So again, the same thing, the solute here is NaCl solvent is water. And you are now going to determine the concentration um, in terms of mass percent. Okay, so for part B. And then you are going to do also the calculation. In the final lab report for part B, which is mass percent of NaCl, you are going to write down the weight of NaCl used, and then the volume of water added, and then the density of water, which is 1.00 gram per ml. And then you are now going to determine the weight of water used based on the density and the volume and then determine the mass percent of NaCl solution um, in the sample. And then answer the question, please, by showing how to prepare solution B from solution A. So now going back to the um, solution in here. So this is more concentrated. This is less concentrated. You don't see a difference here. It's hard to determine which one is uh, there's no way to determine, okay? However, if I put more, at some point, this NaCl will not dissolve, meaning that you supersaturate it, you will see the NaCl, um, some of the solid will not dissolve anymore because there's a maximum uh, amount that the water can dissolve the NaCl um, based on the volume that, that I'm adding. So the solution right now is composed of NaCl plus H2O, NaCl plus H2O. Part C is preparation of an injectable IV. We are now going to weigh 2.5 grams of dextrose or glucose, and then we are going to dissolve that in 50 ml of the saline solution that we prepared in Part B. And then mix the solution to dissolve. 
So in this case, you are actually, um, you have two solutes that would be NaCl and then glucose, and then the solvent is still water. This is now the weight of the glucose in part C, and as you can see inside, I have the sample already in the weighing boat. And this is the glucose dextrose that I used. So I scooped the glucose, the same procedure, and then weighed 2.500 grams. So write that weight, please, 2.500 grams, exactly 2.500 grams. And then I'm gonna take it out. So this is now the dextrose that I weighed, and then I'm gonna put it again in a beaker. So I label this as part C IV. All right, so just the dextrose. And then I took um, 50 ml of that part B solution. So it was 100 ml before. As you can see, 100 ml. So I took out 50 ml. I measured 50 ml using the graduated cylinder. And again, I'm going to dissolve it. So remember, this is NaCl, this is saline solution. And then, however, we're gonna mix one more solute, which is the glucose or dextrose. So the same thing, I'm gonna pour it. And then, I'm gonna stir it again using a stir stirring rod, and it should dissolve. So, um, glucose is a sugar. Um, it's one kind of a sugar. You're gonna learn this later in the semester when we talk about biochemistry. Um, it's different than sucrose. Sucrose is the table sugar. Salt, NaCl is the table salt. Your sucrose and glucose are different. Okay, they're not the same. They're not the same structure. They're both uh, sugars or carbohydrate, um, but structurally they are different. So you can see that it actually became clear. So you don't see, I still see some specks at the bottom, so I want to dissolve completely. So once you make the solution, the solute seems to disappear, right? So you don't see any layer again, it's homogeneous. You don't see separation of the layer. It's completely like water. So you, you will not be able to determine what's in the water because it's clear, okay? So that is your IV, injectable IV, and it's clear solution, all right? So that is basically your, your part C. Part C in the uh, final lab report is you have the preparation of an injectable IV USB solution. You are going to write down the weight of dextrose that we used, and then the volume of saline solution used, and then determine the concentration of dextrose in the solution. We're now doing part two, which is the dilution. So I'm going to illustrate how to dilute a solution. And we're just using the uh, solution that we made in part A, which is the sodium chloride solution. So um, to illustrate, I will put, so I have two beakers in here, and then I'm gonna put a drop of the blue uh, food coloring, one drop, so blue food coloring, one drop each beaker. So intensely blue, so basically just a drop. Okay, and then I'm going to split the part A and ACL solution into 250 ml um, cylinder. So I now have um, 50 ml each of the part A uh, solution. 
So I split the solution that we had from part A and ACL aqueous solution into 250 ml graduated cylinder. So now I'm just going to pour, pour it here. Okay, and then the other one the same. Okay, so the color intensity is the same. So I now have two beakers exactly the same. I just split the previous solution. However, for beaker number two, I'm going to put additional 50 ml of just water. Okay, so we're going to compare the intensity. Okay, so this is the um, a more concentrated one and this is going to be the diluted one. So the one on the left is the a concentrated one. So this one I added 50 ml more of the water and you can see that the intensity of the blue coloration is in fact much more in here than the one on the right. So this is the diluted one and this is the more concentrated one. So now you are going to determine the concentration of the diluted one. Okay, so obviously the concentration here will be less than the uh, one on the left side. Part three is about preparation of a hand sanitizer. The first part is uh, preparation of basic antibacterial solution. And then part B, we're gonna add aloe vera moisturizer. So part A, I'm just gonna mix um, absolute ethanol. So this is absolute ethanol. And then I already measured 35 ml. So 35 ml, 35.0 ml of the um, absolute ethanol into the graduated cylinder. And then I'm just gonna mix um, 15 ml of water. So this is just RO water. So 15 ml of the RO water. So I'm just gonna mix it here. So basically I'm voluming it to, I'm just adding up to 50, 50 mil. And I will um, add using the squirt bottle. Okay, so I'm mixing the two together, it's soluble, okay. So this is now your basic hand sanitizer that you can use, you can already use this as an antibacterial solution or antiviral solution as, or as a disinfectant or as a sanitizer. So I can, uh, ethanol and water actually, they mix in all proportions, okay? When you mix it, it's a little bit warm because there's a heat of solution that is formed when you're mixing two solvents together and you see that it's again a solution, I can mix it, okay? And then, um, you don't see, again, any layer. It's not like your salad dressing kind of mixture of oil and vinegar that you see uh, when you're putting it in your salad. Okay, so that is the um, antibacterial solution, okay? The next part is now you are going to determine the concentration of the solution expressed as percent by volume of ethanol. So you're going to fill up the spaces, okay, the blank spaces. So again, um, it's gonna be, so you're gonna fill this up, okay? Volume of absolute ethanol and then volume of water added. And then now what is the concentration, concentration of ethanol in the solution, okay? Percent by volume, okay, to the correct unit and significant figure. Again, apply the concept of sig figs that we learned uh, previously. So now we are doing now part B. I'm gonna add, we're gonna mix aloe vera gel. So typically when you buy something in the store, they put aloe vera uh, as a moisturizer. 
and then we're just gonna use the antibacterial solution that we made. So there's a minimum amount of ethanol that you should have in your solution, otherwise it will not be an effective uh, disinfectant. Okay, so determine the concentration that we prepared from part A, and here we're just adding aloe vera, okay? So the procedure is um, in the handout. We are measuring seven ml of an aloe vera gel, and then you're gonna add it to 43 ml of ethanol solution that we made from part A. So part A, we're gonna, we prepared 50 ml, right? So we are taking 43 ml of that solution and then combining it with 7 ml of aloe vera gel to have a total volume of 50 ml. Okay, so now, um, so I'd set this aside and then we are going to measure 43 ml of this solution. Okay, we can use this again, actually. Okay. And then I... I have here an aloe vera gel, so I bought it. So this is the aloe vera gel, 100% gel. And if you read the label, actually at the back, and they said that it's 100% pure aloe vera gel, it's fragrance free, no color added. Although if you read the fine print here, they actually added more stuff, okay? So it's not entirely just aloe vera gel, there's like tocopherol, acetate, triethanolamine, and then EDTA. So they have more chemicals that actually they added. But although they claim that they did not test these, they did not do any animal testing. So you, you can see the fine print in here, okay? And then as I mentioned, you have tocopherol, acetate, and triethanolamine. Uh, it typically function, some of these is functioning as a preservative. If you are, uh, using the natural aloe vera, um, it still has active enzymes and it would tend to precipitate out. So I, um, however, for this one, it's not entirely clear, all right? There's a little bit of turbidity and um, I will show you later. Uh, we have a hand sanitizer here in the lab, but let's uh, prepare this one. So. So again, this is the uh, aloe vera gel. And then because it's a gel, it was difficult to measure. So I have here a cylinder and then I measured about seven mil. So it's actually sticking to the side. Okay. So it's so approximately seven ml um, of the gel. Okay, so coming from here, so I basically just pour it like that. And then we're gonna take 43 ml of these, um, of this solution and then mix it together. That's gonna be our hand sanitizer. I measured 43.0 ml of the um, ethanol solution that we made from part A, the remainder seven ml is still here, okay? So now I'm going to mix this together, this 43 ml and then seven ml of the um, aloe vera gel. So I simply, put this here so that I can take out the gel. And then I will try to dissolve it. Okay, it takes a while to dissolve, but it will dissolve. Okay. It's getting less viscous the more I stir it. And then I'm gonna pour it here so that I can take out as much as possible that gel. And because this is actually a smaller container,
this is now the hand sanitizers I, as you can see it's a little bit a little bit turbid there, there's some turbidity to it so I put everything the aloe vera gel that I measured 7 ml and then the 43 ml of the solution that we made in part A so this is the remainder so I can actually use that too because that's an antibacterial solution ethanol solution in water and I have here a hand sanitizer in the lab so you can see that it actually has some uh, turbidity and said they said that it's a uh, with moisturizers and vitamin E okay so this is the hand sanitizer all right um, they said that the ethyl alcohol antibacterial is 62 percent in this uh, clear and natural products right so this is the uh, commercially available hand sanitizer and it's not far right so we made a hand sanitizer with the aloe vera gel in here and you can do this at home so you know at home if you are trying to do this you can buy this and you can buy um, uh, ethanol however um, because you probably don't have any graduated cylinder you can just measure this you know with your laundry you know measuring cup and then as long as the amount of ethanol that you're putting in is still within the minimum amount which is 60 percent so then go below that you can always go higher in terms of the amount of ethanol but don't go below 60 percent because it will not be effective as a disinfectant okay so now you can um say for example so i want to say i want to keep it right so i can label this little container hand sanitizer with aloe vera and i'm gonna um, pour it here So there's still a little bit of a gel actually that's at the bottom but I'm gonna shake it okay all right so now um, so that is my hand sanitizer you can try our product so I can try it here okay so okay not too bad all right last part is now part b addition of aloe vera moisturizer so you're gonna uh, write in the blank volume of aloe vera gel nml and then volume of ethanol solution added and then concentration of ethanol solution used and then the last one is the concentration of ethanol with aloe vera the final concentration after we added the aloe vera gel to the correct unit and significant figure. This is the aloe vera plant that I'm going to show you how to cut. You can buy this in the store it's about maybe two bucks and as you can see there are like you know spikes on this so you have to be careful and i'm actually um wearing gloves and you can wash these before you cut up here but of course you can also you know include this but you can cut this one because it really does not have anything and now I'm going to cut this part and then I'm going to cut like this like that and then you can cut the spikes it's sharp so you have to be careful and you can do the same thing for this piece you can cut here you can also cut here and then to clean up the spike and now this is the gel it's very slippery and then you can take out the um, the outer layer this is very hard so you can 
take out that layer and again the other side take out and it's very easy to remove it it's soft but this green stuff is hard So I got the gel, so this is like clear, transparent, and if you want to eat it, you can slice it again, and then, or um, this actually doesn't have any taste. It has kind of like maybe very slight bitter taste, um, then, or you can, and you can put honey if you want, but uh, I ate it as it is, and it's very slippery. And you can blend it, you can put it in the blender, and then that's going to be your gel. So again, this is your aloe vera, aloe vera gel.